4,621. So that was in 93. In the meantime, I could probably easily get this number over 5,000. But the number isn't growing as fast as it could or should, because if a person is reported with a clinical AIDS diagnosis and is HIV negative, he or she will not appear in, in national AIDS statistics. They will say, oh, it's Kaposi, that's not AIDS. It's pneumonia or pneumocystis pneumonia. It's not AIDS because it's not HIV positive. And people are, I mean, I know, in fact, people are examples of people who told me under condition of anonymity, they had observed these in Stanford and in San Francisco, the public health, and were pressured not to publish this, simply not to mention it. Or if they published it, not in an AIDS journal and under an AIDS listing. The same thing is happening in England and everywhere else. So these cases mostly date from the early days on HIV and AIDS in the, in the 80s and early 90s, when people were still genuinely asking, is HIV actually found in all AIDS cases? And they reported actually 4,621 cases that I could easily find of AIDS diagnosis in the absence of HIV. And more have accumulated since, but not as many, because people know now what to say and what not to say in order to survive in, in this competitive world. The official definition of AIDS is designed to eliminate every case of AIDS that presents an embarrassing non-correlation against HIV. The official definition of AIDS is 30 previously known all diseases in the presence of antibody against HIV. So if you have Kaposi sarcoma and HIV antibodies, you're an AIDS patient. Without it, you're a Kaposi patient. K pneumonia with HIV antibodies is AIDS. In the absence is pneumonia. Dementia in the absence of HIV antibodies is dementia. And with it, it's AIDS. That's the AIDS definition. There is no HIV-specific disease anywhere. Unlike any other microbe that causes a specific C disease, just like an instrument makes a specific sound, HIV doesn't make a specific sound. It causes, is said to cause, 30 previously known diseases when it's there, and when it's not there, the original causes of these diseases are responsible for them. <laughs> that is the official definition of AIDS, not my joke. Using this official definition, HIV proponents arrive at a near 100% correlation between the virus and AIDS. And remember, the HIV hypothesis is based solely on correlational evidence. And you can find a correlation, there's no question about it. If you ignore all the cases where there isn't a correlation, you have a correlation. But that is, that's, that is, uh, that's a very bad science, and it's very bad epidemiology as well. Critics say this correlation is not objective or scientific, and deceptively self-fulfilling. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, yes. And science is designed to, uh, to, uh, to get around fulfilling prophecies, but in this case, it's, uh, it's proceeding on the basis of one. Finally, the most convincing argument against HIV, the millions of people worldwide who have the virus and are not becoming sick. This is very apparent in Africa, where 97% of those with HIV are healthy and do not have AIDS. Documented AIDS cases amount to only 3%. Also in the U.S., where only half a million infected have progressed to full-blown AIDS over a 15-year latency period. And this figure does not account for the 19 new diseases defined by the CDC as AIDS and 62,000 AIDS patients who were never tested for the virus. It is evident HIV does not cause AIDS in most people, and this evidence becomes stronger every year. Robert Gallo, Anthony Fauci, and the entire scientific and political campaign based on HIV are in serious, serious trouble. And as the foundation of the scientific support for this multi-billion dollar hypothesis crumbles, the real causes of AIDS will continue to take hundreds of thousands of lives. Yet the hollow campaign goes on and on like a broken record. We have a long way to go in the fight against HIV. The virus that causes AIDS. 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 Then what could be the real causes of AIDS? There is no question about the reality of people dying. But if HIV is not the cause, what is? And what can we do to stop it? 
Under the protocol of scientific debate, Dr. Peter Duesberg and the group for reappraising AIDS are not required to solve the problem simply because they dispute the HIV hypothesis, but they have made some suggestions. To begin with, Duesberg argues that AIDS is not infectious, it is not being spread sexually, and it is not a threat to the public at large. He and journalist John Lawrenson have proposed that AIDS is caused by recreational drug use and AZT, psychiatric drugs used by homosexuals as aphrodisiacs, and injected drugs like heroin and cocaine, they claim, are the direct cause of AIDS in nine out of ten cases. AIDS has come from virtually nowhere or from a very low basis up to now currently 80, 90,000 cases per year in this country. So here's it, here's my curve. AIDS has gone up in the last uh, 14, 15 years from uh, virtually nothing that used to be called that way. There was always a low background of these diseases. None of the AIDS diseases is new. To up to 100,000 in 93 and now it's topping down to 80,000 uh, last year. But HIV has been unchanging one million. So this cannot ever be the cause of this. This is going up from nowhere to 100,000, and this is staying a million for 10 years. How can this cause this? But if you look at this here, this shows you how cocaine use and heroin goes up. This is cocaine, and this is heroin, and this is cocaine-related hospital emergencies. You will see that these two match pretty well. And that's what we discussed earlier, that's the lifestyle hypothesis or the drug hypothesis that recreational drugs are causing these diseases. And they, they uh, match perfectly over time. They track perfectly the drug use, the drug use emergencies, heroin, cocaine in this case, and AIDS, but not HIV. The correlation between AIDS and skyrocketing drug use is astounding. And unlike HIV, we have a good idea of how drugs suppress the immune system. Well, how does smoking cause emphysema? How does alcoholism cause liver cirrhosis? That is something that has been described in the literature. It's chemistry. You know? Chemicals have their price. You can't expect to take chemical at a dose that gets you so high that you don't sleep anymore, you don't want to eat anymore, have 10 or 20 sex partners per night to expect to be totally inconsequential for your health. If you do so much chemistry, put you so much chemistry in your body and do it with your body, you cannot expect that this has no consequences. It's like hoping that you can drive an American freeway car designed to go 60 miles an hour and 160 miles and expect it to run just as long as the company has promised uh, it would last. Though there are no government-funded studies that examine the long-term effects of drug use in this war on AIDS, the medical literature is full of cases of AIDS-like symptoms among drug addicts. Since 1909, we've observed the horrendous effects of heroin, morphine, speed, cocaine, and other injected drugs on the immune system. Today, thousands of American junkies who are not infected with HIV are losing the same CD4 T cells and getting the same diseases as AIDS patients. How has the war on AIDS addressed this issue? We've passed out clean needles and told addicts to avoid getting HIV. IV drug users comprise over 32% of all US AIDS cases. Approximately 62% of all the women with AIDS are IV drug users and 70% of the babies born with AIDS are born to mothers addicted to drugs. But the largest risk group is male homosexuals. Well over half, that's 60% of all AIDS patients are gay men. What is causing AIDS in homosexuals and are they all at risk? Here again, Peter Duesberg argues that AIDS is not infectious and is really the result of drugs used by many men in the fast track gay lifestyle. Surveys conducted by the CDC show that gays often indulge in a high amount of recreational drug use including many of the drugs known to be immunosuppressive in drug addicts. But one drug that was available legally, nitrite inhalants, commonly known as poppers, are used extensively. Poppers are believed to be the direct cause of Kaposi's sarcoma, a rare form of skin cancer that afflicts the nose, throat, lungs, and skin. Kaposi's sarcoma has been an indicator disease of AIDS, but it is often found in gay men who are not infected with HIV. In a study published by Toby Eisenstein, 
Rodents showed an immediate dose response in immune suppression after being exposed to nitrites found in poppers.